All right, Jen, you know how bigger isn't always better? You've been telling me that for years. Ah, so funny. <laughs> well, in this case, the TCL Q6 in the 98 inch size is a whole different ball game than other sizes of that TV. So we're gonna show all the cool features of this TV, the setup and all that, and then we're gonna compare it to the QM8, which is like twice the price. So affordable, maybe less affordable, show that in this video before some buying advice. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's go ahead and start unboxing because I'm not a big fan of the Atlanta Falcons. Steelers all the way. Yeah, Steelers or Packers, no Atlanta Falcons, boo. Let's do it. So Jen, the 98 inch version of this TV actually is a 120 hertz panel, where the other sizes are only 60 hertz. So that's a big improvement. And then we'll see if there's any other differences we notice from there. Nice work, nice work. Oh, Timber. All right, let me help you pick those up so you don't pull them out. I'm gonna try to lift it. it might. We don't wanna have a snag in our beautiful carpet. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a rug. This is a fun part, Jen. Let's see if you can get this. It's pretty high, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hate shame me. Just want to make sure you're okay. Safety first, you know? Then teamwork. Then teamwork. Good job. Mm -hmm. Here, here, and here. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. High five. A foot? Yeah, that looks pretty similar to the QM8. Another foot. I like it. This, you know, this is like their third year making these 98 inch TVs. Definitely better feet. They're like not as bulky. Oh look, a remote and batteries and a power cord. I love that, that's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use this in a bit. Yeah, not, not a whole lot up there, you know? All right, let's, let's, uh, let's open it up. It's, oh, we're here. It's right here. Maybe think fast. Uh oh, <laughs> didn't get it, darn it, two. You gotta say think fast before you throw it. Think fast. Come on, too easy. Left hand. Off the backboard. You bounced it off of Jean. One more. All right, you good? Yep. I'm just down here on the business end, man. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> open it As up. you should be. Let's go, come on, come on. This is the thing, you gotta have a plan before you do this. It opens this way, but there's the dining room area. We already got stuff in there, so should we lift it out and take it that way? I'm gonna have to bring it this way. And then, and then, come on, I need a little help. You're, you're fine, the TV won't fall, probably. Get it around there, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Old Caesar got excited. Caesar, oh, he's Caesar. Oh, you see the birdie? Caesar. No, Caesar. you can't play with him. Come on, man. Let it live, Caesar, let it live. All right, there's a lot of packaging here. It's, it's uh, well done. Now, do we need any of these pieces for putting the stand on? No, I think right we just pull here, it apart. So I'll take some of this off. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna lift it a little. There we go. Awesome. So Jen, you know what would make this easier? Tell me. Is if they wrapped it and they had like something that unwrapped this way. So then you could, cause like right now, we can't get under here unless we just tear this apart. Yeah, or at least if it opened up from the bottom versus the top. Yeah, but you know. So what are we gonna do? Let's just unwrap it a little bit. We're just gonna tear it up. It's just hard to do because we have to like take it out of the styrofoam or just at least run it around the edges. We'll get it. You know, you just unbox a lot of TVs and you're like, Maybe we can do this better than they can. I think the last time for the QM8, we just like took it out. Should we just take it out? Eric, we might need your help. Can you just set it on that and help me lift this? Yeah. Jen, will you take the plastic out while we just lift it so that we don't have to set it down? Yeah. Okay. Ready, Eric? Yep. One, two, three. And can you take out that thing in the middle too? Awesome. Uh, we should have also got discarded this thing, but we'll do that in a minute. Cool, it actually stays up by itself too. You wanna go or let me take it? I got it. Okay. I will note, this is a little bit lighter than some of the other 98 inch TVs we've had. Definitely lighter than the Samsung we had. That thing was so heavy. Thank goodness. This was just weird because it was really thin too. Thicker, lighter. Does that make a difference in quality? Who knows? We'll have to find out. So I've got a little 
Slider guy. Slider, cord management. Hi, Caesar. Okay. Hi, Caesar. Now, do we want to like make it go a little higher? Let's see. Can you, what happens? Yeah, that's pretty tight. I kind of like that though. That's it's not too low profile. Does it go right in? Does it just go right in the hole? Oh gosh, you have that right. I have it. <laughs> Should I lift it up? Is that good? Oh, it fits right in there. All right. Nice. Okay. Screw away. Am I doing it right, Caesar? What's she doing? What's she doing? Okay. All three? All three. Nice. And there we go. Hey, Brandon, are you done playing with the dog yet? Yep. Or are you going to come help? You know, just hanging out with him while you're doing the hard work. <laughs> cool. We're ready to get this thing out of here? Okay. Uh, you want to help us lift it again? I don't think she should lift it. Eric has to help me because Jen's back's a little messed up. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you how, but you know what I'm saying? Ready, one, two, three. Thank you, sir. I'll get this out of the way. Ah! All right. Thanks, Eric. Sure. Okay, let's go, boys. Let's get it moving. You ready to go, Eric? Let's do it. All right, one, two, three. All right, mm -hmm. it's pretty good, looks pretty good. Oh yeah, big TV, Jen, what you think? Yeah, that is a big TV. You guys did a great job getting it up there. Yeah. I see a lot of plastic. I was to just pull. gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. It's time for you to pull the plastic. Let's roll. Yay. I'll hold that for you. Look. Got to get my big head out of the frame though. Wow, you're going fast and hard. Okay. And here comes the masterpiece, Here's huh? The big one. That's a loud one. Oh yeah. Okay, Jen, good job. That was awesome. Thank you, I put a lot of effort into it. I saw. So the front here looks a little bit different than the shinier finish of the QM8 there. It's a little bit more matte-like. To be honest, it's not that great. You can see that light's a little bright, but you know, we'll figure that out when we do the reflection tests. But overall, it looks pretty awesome. I mean, it's a fairly streamlined TV. Looks nice, nice and thin. Got, got the ultra base from Ankyo. Ooh, a little plastic for you to peel there too. Nice. It's got a really weird pattern. This looks like it's a 600 tall by like 400 wide, which is not very standard for TVs. So, you know, again, you're going to have to make sure you have a sizable mount if you want to hang this on the wall. Is that how they label it on Amazon? A sizable yes. mount? It says a sizable mount per <laughs> BB installer. Very official. And then on the back, you got a couple USB ports. You got the LAN port, and then down there you have four HDMIs. It looks like you got two 4K 120, and the top one is actually 144 hertz if you want to connect PC for gaming. And then the fourth one has the eARC port to connect to your soundbar. And then you also have antenna, headphones, and optical. But that's enough about the back. People want to see what it looks like from the front. Let's get that remote and turn it on. So here's the remote. Pretty standard. You've got your specialty buttons, your volume and channel up and down, the directional pad. I like to use the voice assistant because typing in every single letter gets really annoying sometimes. And same with when Caesar jumps on one of these specialty buttons at the bottom. He's always turning the channel and turning the TV to different stuff. But enough about the remote, let's turn it on. All right, here we are on the home screen. And look, you go down one spot and there we are with the Hisense review. Well, 
This is a TCL review, much bigger TV. But like in that video, we're gonna show you some sports content, some movie content, and then some buying advice. But we're gonna show you this versus the QM8, as I said before, because the QM8 is the top TCL TV, so I wanna see how this 98 inch performs against it. But anyways, I've talked about this Google TV operating system many times. And as you can see on the home screen here, you have all the different apps that you guys would want. YouTube TV, Prime Video, Disney Plus, Netflix, YouTube, all the ones that we use. I really like the Google operating system. I I know you've probably heard me say that before, but you're just able to go in there and find videos that you've watched, things that would be recommended for you, and it's a very well done operating system. If you leave the TV on too long or just get bored, you can watch some pretty cool art on this ambient mode. Time and temp down at the bottom corner, so giant picture on your wall right here if you don't want to have it on the home screen. But I want to get into YouTube TV so I can see how the 98-inch Q6 looks. And now that we have some football on here, look, we can see all of our fantasy football stats and information. It's getting me stoked for the football season. I can't lie about that. And overall, this TV looks pretty solid. I think the biggest thing is that it's just big. It's huge. So very immersive size. I, I like that. Um, it's not overwhelmingly bright, but I think at the same time, I don't really notice a lot of downsides just by throwing it on here and checking out some YouTube. Overall, I think the upscaling looks good. I remember even when we had the 85 inch TCL XL, it was like three years ago. Go. It was a little bit sketchy on how well it upscaled content like this, but this looks very similar to some of the other 98 inch TVs that I've seen. And by the way, we did have to change a couple of settings. The picture mode was on low power. We turned it to sport here, and then we did increase the brightness up to 100. And the dynamic contrast was on, which we turned off to make sure that it didn't have any artificial enhancements. And then in the color, we did turn it to a warmer color temperature because it was a little too cool. They also had that dynamic color on, which gives it kind of a pop, but it's a little bit artificial. So again, I turned that off, but if you wanted to get a little bit more out of this TV, you can by adding dynamic color, dynamic contrast, and get a little bit more pop. But overall, I like how this sort of content looks, especially on a giant screen. So let's get into some HDR movies. And then of course, we're gonna do a couple of tests and some gaming, and then compare these two giant 98 inch TVs before getting to that buying advice, as I said. Wow, now that we have it on HDR, I have to say, again, like last year when we looked at the TCL S5 in the 98 inch version, this Q6 looks very good. It's just a very even picture. I don't think you could differentiate this from a lot of other high end TVs when watching movies like this. I mean, the color and contrast and brightness levels all look very good. And the picture looks quite sharp as well. I mean, you know, this is a giant screen and the text on the screen looks very sharp. This is a 4K HDR, you know, Dolby Vision movie. So it looks very clean uh, across the board. Now, I'm really interested to see how it looks against the Q because again, that's like a four or 5,000 nit TV. And this is surely not that. But again, in this 98 inch size, it's very good. And I'm just really happy with it for the price point and how large it is. So I really think we should do some tests real quick here in order to like then get it up against the QM8 and see where it stands for this price. So for testing really quickly, we'll start with the blooming test, which is something that LED LCD TVs can have issues with, except for this TV doesn't have dimming zones. So that's actually a benefit here. You don't have that blooming or light bleeding in the picture. So when you're watching a widescreen movie, no issue because there isn't gonna be light bleed into those areas. Now, when you're looking at this off angle, this is a VA panel like a lot of the other 98 inch TVs. So it doesn't look amazing from off angle. Not as good as something like that 75 inch high sense we were showing where that's an ADS panel. It looks pretty good off angle. So, you know, this TV is great in size, but if you're gonna have a really wide viewing angle, it's not gonna look quite as good from the sides as something like an OLED or even some of those UST projectors we have, or again, those ADS panels, but those are a lot smaller. So not gonna be in 98 inch size yet. Now the dirty screen effect or screen uniformity is something we use to see how clean the panel looks. So if you're on a white screen, does it look white or are there some blotchy areas? Overall, this TV looks pretty good. If you see the little hockey guy move around, you can notice a little bit behind him, but there aren't any obvious spots that I'd be like, oh, that's a big red flag. So again, 98 inch TV, pretty inexpensive. This looks pretty good. And lastly, the reflections. Now, it's not exactly the same as the QM8, and that's what I have to compare it against. I mean, it's not a glossy finish like an OLED or a high-end mini LED. It's more of a matte finish, and to be honest, it doesn't have the best anti-reflective capabilities. So that included with the fact that this TV probably isn't as bright as some of the other high-end, super expensive 90-inch TVs means you'd be better off having this in a room that's kind of light-controlled. So if you have a giant window that's behind you in your viewing, this may not be able to knock down that reflection fantastically unless you can close those blinds. But overall, I'd be pretty happy with this in most rooms. And overall, it's a pretty good TV so far on these tests. 
Okay, and right before we compare these two TVs, we have gameplay. Now again, the 98 inch Q6 has two ports that are 4K 120 and the other sizes do not have that. In fact, they're 60 Hertz TV. So this is a unique TV and it games well for a 98 inch TV. Again, huge and immersive and I don't see any brightness fall off in having the high frame rate or anything. I don't see any major color fall off or anything like that. So again, like in other instances here, it's a very even and well done TV, not overly bright, you know, not overwhelming with contrast, but at the same time, a very solid TV. There is a nice game bar here. You can see it works pretty good. 4K 120, it doesn't currently have VRR, ALM, a couple of these things. You know, we need to mess around with it a little bit more to make sure everything's functional, but I'm not sure in Fortnite it really matters. And some of the other high frame rate games, you might benefit from having some of this game bar stuff up. But overall, main thing is giant screen, solid color, contrast, all these things look good. No downside really when playing game and you have the 4K 120 ports, even up to 4K 144 Hertz if you wanted to connect a PC to it. So, okay, so before we get to the buying advice, I did wanna show you the Q6 versus the QM8 on the right. And as you can see, no matter what content we play, the QM8 is definitely brighter. Now it's not a ton brighter. I know it may look like it is on camera, but it really depends on where you're standing. I'm standing off angle of the QM8, which kind of levels the playing field. So again, depending on if you're sitting right in front or at an angle, all these TVs can lose a little bit of their brightness or color. But if you're viewing them straight on, the QM8 is brighter. It does have better overall contrast but I think the Q6 is holding up pretty nicely, to be honest, especially since it's less than half the price of the QM8. But I think in order for us to really understand which of these two TVs you should buy, we should bring Jen back and talk about buying advice. Okay, B, I am back. You got the boring stuff out of the way. I'm ready for the buying advice. But I wanna ask you, if someone's considering this TV, what other TVs might they consider for the same price range? That's a good question. That's probably the question we should answer because if you're gonna go with something like this, you maybe be considering like an 85 inch TV that is slightly better, or maybe another 98 inch that's more expensive. I guess those are kind of your two options. So let's start with that this is $2,000 for this 98 inch Q6. Okay. okay, and if you go to the QM8, you're paying either 4,000 for the 98 inch or 2,400 for the 85 inch. So a little bit better, but you know, both of those are more expensive than this 98 inch. And if you go to some of the other brands like Hisense, the U8N is actually about $2,000 as well. So that's about the same for a little bit better, smaller TV and so on and so forth. So you're either gonna be paying more to get an 85 inch, or if you're gonna find an 85 inch that's as cheap as this, it's not gonna be as good. So I think that it hits a pretty like cool price point and you know size. Sweet spot. Sweet spot, there you go. <laughs> I was like searching for the word because it's really good for the price and a lot of people will use about, you know, maybe a thousand to two thousand dollars to buy a big TV. And so you can go yeah. enormous with this for two grand. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. And then if you go OLED quality TV, I mean, those are going to be definitely more expensive and smaller. And if you go bigger, like, uh, you know, an ultra short throw like we've done, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part to buy an ultra short throw, a screen, a cabinet, all that stuff is much more expensive as well. So yeah. I think this hits a fantastic price point, sweet spot as you said, has all the features. Now the other sizes in the Q6 are not as good, so only the 98 inch is gonna be this like quality of a TV. The rest of them would be more of an entry level and I would then go with other sizes of the QM8 or the QM7 or the Hisense U7N, U8N and all that. So we can go down, but check out some of those videos, you know. Yeah, well you sold me. So if you wanna get this, definitely say it's the best size per price for the TV. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so if you wanna check out any of these TVs, there'll be links in the description. We also have the TV quiz down there. If you wanna go through that, it'll give you guys some options on TV size and quality and all that for you to check out. Yeah, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. So we can continue to bring you the best content. Until next time. Peace.